at the semifinal of the Gold Cup, but there are some glass half full, glass half empty storylines to get into here as we welcome you back into our One Soccer studio, Eddie Petrillo. Jordan Wilson and Jess Lisi, much better penalties taken by the Canadians in this one. But if you're looking at the pros and cons, how are you feeling about this game? Yeah, first I'm just going to address the, the second half because I think we all agree the first half was great energy from Canada, the way that they pressed, the way that they were tenacious. But then second half, the same thing we said, Jess, Jess Lisi, is that go and play the second half, go and play it in the Americans' half. But the first five minutes they sat back, looked a bit frantic, couldn't clear the ball, couldn't clear the lines, the Americans score and 1-1. So it's that point. I think there's, this was a good test for, for Canada to iron out a few things. Specifically in the midfield, I thought the Americans had a lot of success playing through Canada and just was an open game. But overall, there's a, there's a lot to take from this. Two goals to come back as well after being down 2-1. There are positives. You just wanted to hear that good story. I had the, I don't even know what it's called, but the birthday, the birthday flute, I was ready to blow them and oh, get all excited. Better than mine. Yeah, <laughs> right? But I was ready, and it's just to get so close again for Canada and not get over the line. Obviously, this is a painful moment. Yeah, I mean, I, not to be repetitive, but I did think that first half was, was good on Canada's part. I thought they did really well um, with the energy in the second half. I thought, you know what, Canada's going to bring the same energy. And it's not to say that they didn't have energy. They did want it. You could see it. But the thing is, you can't give the U.S. momentum. I said it before, you know, the U.S. is a team that finds ways to win. Even when in that first half they were a little behind and Canada was the better team, once you give the U.S. the momentum, they made some changes. They dropped Haran back, and she was able to play these, these beautiful balls through, mm -hmm. finding players like Swanson or, or whoever was in there in that middle of the field. So I just think at the end of the day, they, do, they should be proud of themselves. There were a lot of pros to this game, but there's definitely some things they need to clean up. I'm going to find this really interesting, by the way, when Emma Hayes, as we know, is going to be the new head coach of the American women's team. She's finishing off her career with Chelsea, will come back, but Twila Kilgore has been getting the best out of a very young team, 19-year-olds, 21-year-olds, 23-year-olds, and you're right, she was able to make those adjustments in the second half and ultimately force this goal. I should say the Canadians did man manage to come back and force it into PKs as the Americans took the 2-1 lead. Um, but once again, as much as we're going to talk about the young players, and rightfully so, a veteran steps up here as we take you to our All-State save of the match. Alyssa Nair, as we know, in that Gold Cup semifinal game, uh, was the hero for the Americans. So she makes a big save here off Evelyn Viennes. They needed that. She had also scored a goal prior, by the way. Uh, and then, of course, with that and Fox scoring, that is what ultimately gives the Americans the She Believes Cup title for the seventh time. And again, a team in transition, we're using those words a lot. And you're talking about players, like I said before, Jaden um, Shaw, who's 19, Sophia Smith, who's 23, a Trinity Rodman, who's 21. But you have players like Alex Morgan, Lindsey Horan, but how about Alyssa Nair? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I laugh just because she's very intimidating. Like, yes. not only the way that she takes a penalty, but the way that she looks ready to save, right? You, you, if you're American, you're like, she's going to save one. You yeah. feel confident. Like, if we take care of our penalties, she's going to save one. And it's no slate on Kaylin Sheridan. I think that she's a, a, a dominant keeper as well. But you're just looking at her facial expressions, the way that she is, she's like, I got this. And the way she strikes a pen, we'll, we'll talk about that now. It's like, she puts it down, no nonsense. Kaylin Sheridan was close to saving it. But she, she's oomph. That's what I heard. I heard mm, striking that, going in. It's not even top cheese. It's just with power. Very, very solid keeper for the Americans. And this is why when they go into a penalty shootout, they mm -hmm. have the upper hand a little bit. It's definitely with another keeper. Let's talk about, about one of those young players. Our Gatorade performance of the match is Sophia Smith getting a brace in this one. And it just feels like, you know, just as you say goodbye to names you knew on the American women's team, you're getting to know new ones, Jess. Yeah, Sophia Smith is a player that's, she's just well-rounded. She works hard, but she's also not somebody that you want in your final third if you are her opponent. She finishes majority of her opportunities as she gets in and around the 18. She's very good in tight spaces. Like, this is just a perfect example. This is a PK, but the way she strikes the ball, she's confident. She's going bottom corner. She's like, I'm going this way. You're not stopping it. She just, she has this confidence about her. When you watch her play, um, you know, her goal, she takes that, that quick touch to be able to elude the pressure. This is, that's not an easy thing to do, especially in that tight space. And to be able to confidently strike that with your left foot, 
-hmm. you know, it, she's just she's an all-around great player. And yeah, I think the future is really bright for the U.S. with their with their youth. Well, getting a brace for Canada is Adriana Leon. She gets the first goal of the game, then ends up getting the tying goal. I mean, it was deja vu. We saw it a PK awarded, just like we saw in the semifinal at the Gold Cup. With the two goals here tonight, by the way, Adriana Leon moving into sole possession of third for all-time scores on the women's side. But as we take a look at these goals, what did you like about this build-up play? Well, this one for me is just playing smart, right? Playing what you see, Jade Rose seeing the mismatch, Ashley Lawrence just is that dog pursuit, right? Not giving up. Deanne Rose gets on the end of it. And Adriana Leon it actually goes through the legs, but just being in the right spot at the right time. And look at this. This is the perfect example, perfect camera angle. Ashley Lawrence off to the races, not giving up. Deanne Rose is trailing behind. Yes, you get a bit of luck, right, after it hits Nair. And Deanne Rose will call that a pass, but perfect to Leon. But you have to be in those positions. And can the first half really put themselves in that position We're on the front foot? And this is the benefactor of, of doing that. But, of course, the Americans do end up coming out and tying that up in the second half as we head to uh, to that one. And that was really about Americans and their pressure that they were putting on the Canadians. Yeah, you know, the Americans came out the second half. They wanted it. You could see it. And, again, they have that dog mentality. They always do. They're not a team that's willing to give, give up. And when they're down a goal, they're going to continue. So it starts with a turnover. You see a poor pass um, out of the back from Gilles oh. right there. That just needs to be simple to feet. There, there's absolutely no reason that you shouldn't be connecting that. And then about a minute later, this happens. And this is exactly what Canada doesn't want. You look at the numbers in the box, right, Jess? Like, look how many Canadian players are in and around the box. Every single one. There are 11 players 25 yards from the goal. And, like, yeah, Sophia Smith, you can watch it all the time. Touch. Yeah, on the left foot. But when you absorb so much pressure you know at some point it's going to break. And you want to see Canada just opening the match. We talked about the dark arts, Andy. But just spreading it. The, for the first five minutes, they played in a 30-yard radius from their goal. And that just leads to this, a goal and being, being a tied game or being down. And they kind of did it to themselves in some ways. Yeah, and I just want to say, like, that's obviously a very frustrating... There's nothing more frustrating than trying to clear the ball out of your 18-yard box and it just keeps getting bounced in because the Americans had numbers. And that's something they do really well. They attack in numbers. Um, so that, that was definitely a frustrating goal from Canada. They tried to clear it a few times. It just kept coming back at them. And Bev Priestman will be racing to lock in all those videos to show her team because what she told us as well when we had our conversation with her was I want my team tested defensively because clearly she knows that this is something that happens to them that when they get caved in there is an inability there to cleanly clear it as we take a look at the second goal and, and just once again see the Canadians struggling a bit defensively here. Yeah for me this one is a bit different Andy because this is just, look at that, Simeon Rujo, Jesse Fleming get beat by one pass, and Kadisha Buchanan tries to step. But then this is beautiful, beautiful recovery by Gabby Carl and Vanessa Gilles. But this was an indication for me. Haran, look at this, boom, again. Look at all that space. Then they're off to the races. Do well to play Sophie Smith free. But again, it's just how extended Canada is, how, how long the lines are. Well, look at that one pass, right, literally, has all the time in the world, Shaw, and then they play the chance big, right? 2-1, the Americans. You just want to see a more compact Canada, right? Just saying, hey, play around us, but not through us. And too often in the second half, the Americans could pick a pass that could hurt Canada, and they were chasing. You never want to chase this American team. They're far too athletic, and they'll punish you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they did, they did a really good job at exposing Canada in that second half, I would say. To your point, those clips really show it. Fleming and, and, Simeo, and Simeo Ujo were getting pulled quite a bit far apart. Um, they were finding Swanson there in that gap. She was able to turn and she had nobody on her. There was a few times you saw Buchanan trying to bite to, to get there to be able to you know, cut off the pass to Swanson, but she was late, which opened up more space in behind for players like Rodman and Smith to get in behind. So there was a little bit of mix up, it looked like, in Canada at times. So let me ask you this. Sometimes is that just a team panicking a little bit and maybe trying to just step outside here and do too much? Should you just trust the coach, trust the formation, and stick to it? Because how does that happen? Or do you give credit to the Americans saying, it doesn't really matter. They did what they had to do to pull and, and kind of, you know, the Canadians taking the bait a little bit there. Because that is something Bev said to us. She understood they had to protect the middle. She wanted to push the, uh, the Americans to the sides. How did that happen? Well, I'll say, from the tactical point, we'll address first. The Americans have three in the midfield, very good players. Haran dropped down. Then you have uh, Shaw that was in the pocket who loves to drive and go forward, and you only have two midfielders for Canada, 
Fleming and Simeon Rujo. When we talked to Bev yesterday, want to play a 3-4-3, which I understand, but maybe this is a time or a situation where you need an extra midfielder. Someone, maybe the likes of a Desiree Scott, not saying necessarily her, but someone that relishes cleaning up in front of the back three. Because you saw Kadisha Buchanan many times trying to step, and that is because she could recognize there was a space that America was finding joy. But who is that person for, for Canada? But when you look at the roster, is there anyone who really likes to, to play in that role and, and, and do that dirty work? No, but I think when you play... Uh, the U.S. or you play German or you play teams that are good in those areas, you need someone to block up that hole, need someone to, to counteract what other teams will do. And Canada just didn't have that the second half. Mm -hmm. Well, then you wonder, obviously, perhaps if you try a third midfielder there. But once again, the Canadians, uh, late in the game, managed to draw a penalty. It's Adriana Leon, once again, who steps up and uh, ends up capitalizing on this one. So... I this is what I mean by glass half full. The Canadians don't exactly just throw in the towel against the Americans. Yeah, they, they kept going. That's the one thing. Canada had the mentality. They had that fight mentality today. And this is a very smart foul from Adriana Leon. Obviously, this was a PK, but, you know, it was a little bit of a, a soft push. So Adriana Leon to fall was, was very smart on her part. And to be able to bury that. She did such a good okay. job at striking this, confident, placed it so well. Nair didn't even guess the right side, and we've seen how well Nair has done in guessing um, which way the players are going to shoot. I love that Leon went into the box the way that she did, that little one-two. And you're right, Jess, it's just so uh, positive to put it on her left foot, put the weight on her right, anticipate that the foul is going to come. And it wasn't a dive, it's you're feeling the contact and you drop. But you know as a defender, and I've defended, once you get into the box, you can't touch someone. Like, it, it favors their attacker, and Adriana Leon knows that. It's like, look, if you're going to touch me, I'm going down. And this is the point, but that never say die attitude, that's the silver lining from today. And so different. Go back, look at our pregame show. I'm sure we'll have some posts up right now where you guys broke down the PKs. And when you already look at the difference between her PK in that Gold Cup game, where you could clearly see where she was going the entire time, a lot more trickery there. So she picks up two goals. And as I would mentioned earlier, she now moves into sole possession of that third spot on all-time goal scores. So 39, passing the great Bertini there. Um, Charmaine Hooper, 71. Oh. Christine St. Clair. I don't know. Let's just put a border around that, some stars, 190. That'll just, that'll just stay there. But Adriana Leon creeping on up. And I don't know if you like her in that nine spot. You know, because here's the thing. As we look ahead now, this is all going to be about the Olympics. And Bev's going to try and find the perfect formation and the perfect personnel, which, by the way, Jordan Heidema leaving this game in the first half. The biggest challenge, and this is for any coach, and especially for Bev Priestman, it's going to be health. Yes. Now you're starting to worry a little bit. You want to make sure everyone stays healthy. So obviously we don't know the extent of Jordan Heidema right now. But as she tries to figure out the formation, what do you think about Adriana Leon maybe as that number nine? Do you want to see her there a little bit more as we watch the Canadians now picking up the silver medals? Yeah, no, I like her there. I like that she drifted out to the right um, towards the end of the second half. Um, I like the fluidity between Canada, but look, you, you bring up a great point, Andy, which is about the health, because I think if you have a Nichelle Prince playing down at the nine, then I think a lock-in is Adriana Leon on the right and, and, and be able to do that. So it, it's one of those things where right now we're just trying to make the most of, of what you have for Bev Priestman, and I think it worked in terms of Leon um, coming to get the ball today, Jess. But in an ideal world, you just want to see Nichelle Prince, maybe someone who can hold up the ball and run deep playing in that, that number nine position and maybe having a Chloe LaCasse on the other side. But just having those options, even Janine Becky, right, could be, is more than competent playing in, the, in that front three. So the health is the biggest thing for this team. If they can get everyone healthy, there's options for sure. Yeah, you know, Leon and, and Nichelle Prince obviously play that nine role very differently, but I do think that when you have a player like Leon in there, you're expecting her to drop and try to spin and, and potentially, you know, feed the ball through. But it is good to have her in the middle of the, the field, right? She scores goals. That's what you want. But, yes, ideal world, Nichelle Prince is healthy. That's your first option. And Adriana Leon has done really well, especially in this formation, um, because she is pinched a little bit more. We're not seeing her so far out wide. Um, and I think her and Ashley Lawrence have, have developed a partnership. We didn't mm -hmm. see much of it today obviously as she was playing in the middle but we've seen that develop game you know time and time again each game so um, yeah I think that she's a good option there but I do prefer her out on the flank 
Well, the Canadians right now receiving their medals. By the way, this is their best finish of the She Believes Cup, now finishing in second. Prior to that, a couple years ago in 2021, they had finished third as we bring you the full-time stats. So uh, the Americans catching up with the shots there. Um, and then ultimately the goals 2-2 heading into penalties. This one having to go a little bit more than the regular. So 5-4, the Americans beat the Canadians in penalties here to claim the She Believes Cup title. Well, there is the young Sophia Smith. She is the MVP of the tournament. We'll continue to look at this game. And, of course, what's ahead for the Canadians is they are hoping to get some matches, some friendlies under their belt as they will head to Paris to defend their Olympic gold. CanadaSoccerStore.com is the official home for the widest range of Canada Soccer licensed products, match jerseys, and fanwear. Over. Brilliant! What a strike! Again, I say, who else? Do we really have any choice at all? Everyone has a choice, and every choice has a consequence. Which do you choose? Uh -huh. Life's full of tough choices, isn't it? How do you choose? From the edge of your seat or up on your feet, let them hear you cheer. Allstate and its 900 agents proudly support Canadian soccer at every level. Visit allstate.ca. Toyota's electrified vehicles are for everyone. Every chauffeur, snack connoisseur, every scenery soaker, practical joker, every road tripper, toe dipper. Every nine to fiver, every long driver. Starting over 20 years ago with the Prius, we now have the largest lineup of electrified vehicles in Canada because this journey belongs to everyone. One Nation with Wills and Trills makes its return <laughs> on April 16th. That's it. Every Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern. This is where we interview soccer guests. It could be players. It could be management, current players, former players. Um, does anyone want to be a guest on our first show? <laughs> we yeah. don't have anybody. I mean, yeah. <laughs> hey, I'll do it. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, hey, Jess. Submit, just to submit you, you know, your request to be on our show, and maybe we'll just interview you. Why not? Let's just have one big party in the studio. You get a lot of requests, right? Your, your DMs are about to be blown up. I'm okay, <laughs> because if you catch my eye, maybe if Jade Rose sends me a DM, I'd be like, come on come up, on, girl, because she looked good. What a game. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, it's going to be the lasting impression. A penalty, she took a great one a few days ago, and it wasn't the best one tonight, but... Talk about a performance from a young player. This was like an experienced performance, Jess Lisi. Solid, strong, read the play. And what I love about Jade Rose, outside of her 1v1 capabilities, is the fact that she turns a defensive tra uh, transaction into something attacking, offensive. The way that she plays the ball forward, the way that she switches it, the way that she goes by one player. And this is what you saw tonight. Most people are going to be like, oh, Ashley Lawrence ran for this, but it's also... Jade Rose putting in a position where Nair had to come out behind American's back line, putting those those putting all those those things together. And this is what she did. Even here being caught out, dropping back, getting into position, opening her body, shifting, getting a block. Like all these things go unnoticed to the, the naked eye, but this as a defender. She's going to be a huge mainstay for Canada. Yeah, and I just want to point out, she reads she reads the game really well. Like, in the attack, there's a lot of defenders that they struggle to maybe hit that long ball. Jade Rose was switching the ball frequently tonight, and she did it well. She wasn't just aimlessly hitting it to that. Like, the goal itself shows, yes, that was a great ball. It was a little far, people would argue, but it was also perfectly placed where Nair had to come out. Lawrence was able to get there and challenge it. Um, could it have been slightly 
less hit, possibly. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it was a great ball. She saw that you know, the U.S. was pushed up. There was a great opportunity. And she found the opposite side. She found Heidema a few times in that first half by just switching it. But being able to switch that and recognize when to evade pressure that way is, is just, you know, it's not something that you can teach. July 26th, opening ceremony of the Paris Olympics. Soccer gets started before. Uh, match day minus one for the Olympics is actually the game day for um, soccer at the Olympics. So if you're Bev Priestman, I think she's hoping to get a handful of games, maybe three to four games there. Hopefully, wouldn't it be nice to see something on home soil? But if you're the manager and you're just kind of looking at, you know, your sheets right now and your players, like what is it that you're trying to work on? I mean, we mentioned it yesterday, but for me, I think considering maybe adding another midfielder, I want to get stuck on formation so much, but it's just about having a bit more balance. When you see you play at teams like the U.S. that can hurt you, it's maybe just clogging the midfield. I understand the 3-4-3, but maybe just adding someone else, having Quinn, maybe a Rujo and Fleming or Grosso in there, and just solidifying, solidifying that base. I think that's important. Yeah, figure out the formation and figure out the partnerships that work best. I think it's as simple as that. She really needs to figure out who's doing what, where, and, and what the form best formation fits all those people. And health, right? I mean, I could go through the list here. Maybe I'll try. Olivia Smith, Jade Revere. We just saw Jordan I go down, Sydney Collins, Nichelle Prince. I mean, it has just been, it, the list goes on. Uh, Quinn, the, who's missed out as well. So obviously the key is stay healthy. This one goes to the Americans. They are the She Believes Cup champions, but the Canadians for seen penalties. They just come up short. They'll have to wait until another day to see if they can beat the Americans. The last time doing that at the Tokyo Olympics. You've been watching this tournament here on One Soccer. On behalf of everyone, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.